Okay, now we'll spend a few minutes talking about Section 245A, which is the what's referred to as the participation exemption. Now, that expression is a misnomer because it's not an exemption, it's a deduction. If you have a dividend, and remember, uh, remember that when I say when you have a dividend, that has to be thought of not in the context of just any dividend, but rather when a dividend is paid, you have to look to the source of that dividend to see, okay, how much is a real dividend for tax purposes, how much is something else? So you'll recall that we, that we said that if we have a CFC, that when it has earnings, okay, some of those earnings may be subpart F income. Some of those earnings may be guilty. Some of those earnings may be a residual, which is the earnings and profits minus subpart F income and guilty. So if we have, uh, if we have this kind of situation, okay, these two, you'll recall under section 959, they create a previously taxed income account. You only have a real dividend for tax purposes that we now look to section 245A, which is this participation exemption, dividends received deduction. We only are concerned with a dividend that zeroes this out and actually distributes some of this residual earnings and profits. Now, once we get to that residual, now we have, of course, income because section 61 of our beloved code says, you know, all income is included in taxable income or included in gross income, I should say. And that includes dividends, uh, this, uh, dividends out of this residual, that includes uh, those uh, dividends. So now, to the extent of those dividends, Section 245A calculates an amount which under most situations will be equal to the amount of the dividend and says you get a dividend received deduction for this. So if you have a hundred of residual and let's say you pay a dividend of 75 out of that hundred, you'll have 75 of income and under most circumstances you'll have a dividend received deduction of 75. Now last time I checked 75 minus 75 is zero. So we have no further U.S. tax, no further U.S. tax on that dividend. I need to emphasize that this dividends received deduction only applies to corporate U.S. shareholders and does not apply to any non-corporate recipients such as individuals, estates, or trusts. So. Uh, this is something that needs to be remembered. Now, for those who are interested in more detail, I'm putting in this area a few of the slides that give more detail on this dividend received deduction under Section 245 Cap A. I hope you find it useful. Note in particular the last slide which shows what happens if a U.S. corporate shareholder owns shares of a foreign corporation, which is not a CFC. It's uh, perhaps a surprising result.